Hi, this is KM4CFT. Um, today I thought I would go ahead and go and look through some of uh, the testing I've been doing with a spectrum analyzer for a mixer. So what I'm looking at is the micro bit X, and I'm looking at the uh, first stage that, uh, that does the first conversion from the antenna. And so this is what the schematic looks like. As we can see here, we have this the um, signal comes through here, and this is just the low pass filter. This will remove your uh, anything that's not in, H in the HF band, and it's going through this ring diode mixer. Now, I'm not going to go over how a ring diode mixer works. Um, W2AEW has a really good video explaining how that works. And as we can see, we have your so our signal comes in here, and it gets mixed with this clock signal, and that clock signal is going to convert whatever is coming through here to 45 megahertz which um, goes through this, and then this is a um, preamp that will send it through. This is one direction, this is the other direction. So this is the first conversion. So, um, right now I have I have uh, a, uh, a function generator. I'm just doing a plain old um, signal carrier at 14 megahertz, because i got this thing set for 20 meters. And then I have that, but right now I'm going to look at the signal, so if I We've got it set up so that if we look, and it's going to be kind of noisy because we're using a chip that creates a frequency. But if I probe this point, if I probe this point here, you can see this huge, um, that huge spike right there. That's the that's our main one. It's at around 56 megahertz. Um, and if I go over here and I turn on the RF. And go over, and if I, I believe if I connect up to this point here, it's still there. But if I change it, all right. So all I did was just change the um, the frequency range we're seeing. So I'm gonna go over here, and I am going to connect up to this point right here. If you look on there, you can see that's 14 megahertz right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as I've got this little piece of coax connected to um, the uh, local oscillator out, so that's this point right here, or the output of this mixer. This is supposed to just remove some spirit, some harmonics that are produced, um, and I'll be right back again. All right, so now I've rehooked it up. I've just ran it, ran it through into the connector, um, and as we can see, that center one right there is right at 45 megahertz, so if I add a peak detector, you can see it's right around 45 megahertz. It seems to change depending on it. And if we look here, it disappears when I turn it. Right now I'm just pressing this button to turn it on and off. So if I turn it off, it disappears, showing that we are looking at the same one. And if I use this, if I tune it, so I've got the little tune knob here. If I tune it, it should move. You can see it's moving. So. Basically, the idea is that this is going to produce some harmonics in, so in this point right here. And what will happen is, it's going, is we want that to be moved, frequency converted to uh, 45 megahertz, because the next stage is going to be going through a bandpass filter. So basically, that will allow us to drop through our single wanted signal, and then we can take that and either and then go through a demodulation stage later. We I've hooked it up to the other side of the. Um, the other side of the preamp just to see if that actually amplified it and as we can see it's much taller now we're at negative 36 dBm and 36.6 dBm instead of what we were originally at it was much lower and almost just barely above the noise now it's about twice as strong at least in dBm and all it and all that circuit really is would be a common emitter followed by a followed by two emitter followers. Then I'm assuming the two emitter followers are probably there as buffers and then the, that common emitter is probably doing the main amplification. And so, yeah, and we can also, I can confirm by pressing this RF on and off and seeing if it disappears, which you can see it goes away. And as we can also see, it's amplifying all the other harmonics that are produced. These harmonics are being generated mostly by the oscillator because the SI5351 is a, is a square wave and it's not really a perfectly clean sinusoid. So it's producing all these extra harmonics. But by having a very narrow banded 45 megahertz bandpass filter, 
all of those should get um, removed from the signal path if I was to continue to forward, which I will be doing shortly. Next thing I've done is I have connected it to the output of the bandpass filter. And so, so now all those harmonics that were um, all over the place, this is all that we've got now. So, so we've lost, we had a little bit of, of loss due to the bandpass filter because no bandpass filter is perfect and it's going to have a little bit of a loss. But we've got only one sound at, we've only got one harmonic at 45 megahertz. And so as we can see with the output of that of previous, now it's feeding into here and I've got it connected right there past that bandpass filter. So now what should happen is if we uh, take a look like over here, we should see a sum and difference frequency. So this 45 megahertz is going to be either 33 or 56, and we should see uh, we should see a sum and difference frequency uh, over here somewhere, um, and I will check on that. Next thing I'm going to be looking at is the second conversion, and so what this one's doing is it's converting it from the uh, 45 megahertz signal to 11 megahertz, and doing so also converts it to your single sideband signal. The reason being is that we have an oscillator. This one can only do two of two of them. It can either run at 34 megahertz or 56 megahertz. Right now it's going to be around 34 megahertz. And what will happen is it will allow us to invert the signal since we have if, if we've got a single, if we've got a uh, ordinary uh, single sideband signal like just one of the sidebands and we create a sum frequency, it's going to produce one sideband. If we do this difference frequency, it'll be uh, the other sideband. I don't remember which one specific will be which one, but um, nevertheless, we should have that. So if I take a look, so we've um, gotten up to this point, and we should see a 34 megahertz at this point here. So if I take my, I've got my clip set up, and if I connect it up to test point 14, let's see, test point 14 is right here. So if you look, we've got signal light at 34 megahertz, which inverting the sideband will move it to 56 megahertz. So I'm going to move over and take a look at the output of this. All right, so I've um, adjusted our setup here. So now what we're looking at is we're looking at the test point 12 or the output of this mixer. Um, it should be around 11 megahertz if we, yeah, about 11.059 is where it should be. We got 11.06, six, uh, but if I turn on my RF, you can see, you can see it gets a little bit stronger. You can see that other little peak. So you can see that if I turn this, you can see that that's the um, incoming signal. That one on the right is the incoming signal, and right there is where it comes in. And so there's a setup. I've got it wired up like normal, and you can see it's coming in at 11 megahertz, 11.06 megahertz. It might be a little bit off, and I might have to adjust that. I've connected it to the output of the amplifier which is the same as the previous amplifier and we can see that right at a le if we look at it, it's right at uh, if we go to peak you can see that there is it's about 11.059 11.061 uh, and if I turn on RF you can see it gets stronger and if I rotate the knob so I've got this knob and I'll rotate it you can see how it dis how we've got the harmonics so and then it comes out. So we know that up to this point is working. The next step um, is, this is the final conversion stage, is going through this uh, 11 megahertz crystal oscillator filter. Uh, basically, uh, we ha like last time, we have that, we amplified our signal and we have our, all those harmonics. So this is gonna take that final signal and pass it through this filter and that's Similar to that is basically a bandpass filter. It's called a cone style topology. The reason why we have all these cri these crystals here is so that they can be more tolerant. Normally, what you'd have to do is find a bunch of crystals that are matching, but you can't do that. But this allows you to be a little more tolerant, according to what I've been told, and that makes it so that they 
so that um, our signal passes through which if we look at on the outside of our filter so if I turn on my RF signal and I take a look at if it's R84 right here you can see signal right at 11 megahertz you can see kind of the oscillation and if I turn it off it won't be there this, you can see how it's much smoother whenever I do that so that can sh you can see how that that oscillation is but um, I'm going to connect it up to the um, output of the final mixer so this last mixer will bring us to our baseband signal and I'll be right back alright so what I've done is I've just moved it over to the um, the scale I've hooked it up so it's right now it's sitting on the sitting on the output of the demodulator so this should be our baseband signal which if I turn on my let's see I'm going to turn it down so it's not as high you can see how it reappears if I turn it on, off, on, off and the last stage is simply amplification.